boy! <laughs> you wanna <us> hear that? <laughs> Shit, boy! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanna thank you all, guys, yes, for supporting me. If you're watching this video, please give me a like, a subscribe. Thank you all guys. We also have the 246 Island Auto shirts back in stock. If you guys are interested in purchasing one, just hit me up on IG. And if you all guys do follow me on Instagram, you all guys would have known that the BZ Touring is not in my possession right now. It's actually over at the speed shop. Robert is killing it over there, working on that car. I want to big up all of the fabrication guys in Barbados, DCR Motorsports, the speed shop, and whoever else that does fabrication work, big up to you all guys, because trust me, that that word is difficult anyhow um today's vlog what we are going to be doing we are going to be interacting with robert at the speed shop um we are going to as i said we're going to check out the car see the progression of the car i'm very excited with it um from there we're going to just be interacting with him asking him some questions about um the speed shop the builds that he has he has some of the fastest cars in barbados uh, evolution if not the fastest one of the fastest he also have one of the fastest all motor cars if not the fastest as well so and he's also building a thousand front wheel drive honda currently as i speak to you so um that car is supposed to be doing front wheel drive later down he's supposed to be transitioning into all wheel drive so when i when further you guys i'm just talking a little too much so when i further you let's get into this vlog and let's go come on Yes guys, as you want to see here, I am at the speed shop. We are at the speed shop, we actually got here. I'm very excited. We have some very excited cars to show you on this channel right now. Yes guys, so with no further ado guys, let's get into this. <laughs> Alright guys, as you all just heard, and see for you all self, I'm here at the speed shop. Behind me right now is my car, the Kia Swap. Um, BZ Touring. I'm going to run through this for you, let you all guys know exactly what Robert has done so far. All the fabrication work that went into this car to get it at the stage that is at right now. We will also interact with the owner, the speed shop guy, Robert. Um, he has a lot of car projects here right now, so with no further ado, just let me get into this. Alright Robert, I got you here up on the camera. Um, basically, I just want to update uh, the progress that you made so far with the BZ. Uh, with the plans going forward with it. Um, I just take a look at it for the first time. It looked really nice um, So if you could just mind sharing to me exactly was the plans the going vision. forward okay. uh, the vision for it Okay. Um, basically just following your lead and right. uh, refining it from my perspective 
so far did it in the cooler mountain the piping um, I have to do the up pipe from the exhaust and the um, the wastegate as well right um, just got the material for it as you can see right there right the exhaust um, so I will start on that once I get back the flange for the turbo what is left to be done is the fuel cell as you can see over there correct um, I did not put the fill neck as yet because I have a put in a lazy position where it would go so uh, as I cause I would have just given you ideas of what basically I have wanted like the vision that I had for the car and to be quite honest you even supersede that to be quite honest so uh, you, could, you could just explain to me like me bringing the car for the first thing I don't really have an idea but I just run it to you and you just take what I give to you and you just take off with it and come up with such an amazing cause to be quite honest um, I had posted a lot of pics on IG mm -hmm. and a lot of the guys have reached out to me and told me Robert did a fantastic job they haven't even seen it in person as yet right. so could you just share to me you know like um, what what could be going through your head and stuff like that in terms of getting this car the vehicle this car looks really good and it's not even finished as yet right um usually when when i have a car it would take some time to i guess envision how i want to do things from the initial i guess the challenge was how to mount the intercooler after i decided how i wanted to do it um everything else would have flown from there okay flowed from there um i made the steel brackets to go from here because i wanted a, a strong support so i, I did it from the, the the, the uh, frame rails right um and i didn't want it to be connected to the weight plate in case it wanted to move it or adjust the weight plate so, right right um this was the best that i came up with based on where it had some solid support then once i decided how i wanted to do the in the cooler i had it molded then the piping would have flowed from there and you say you wanted which i have by the shortest rope possible you're not using um AC, so correct. You know, I just really as, as short rotated as possible. Yeah, that look firm and nice. Correct. Firm um, and nice. From here, the weight plate now will be the next. Um, I guess not challenge, but deciding exactly how far forward they will put it, so that it still wouldn't fit too low, but yet still. Um, have some surface area that come out the, the battery as well on the left side. Right. So, yeah, the, the weight plate will have the fuel cell on this side and the battery on. on the and we actually and we actually got enough clearance now that we bring the 24.5 there. Right. So if and you could just show me an idea how. <coughs> so, as I told you before, I have to trim here slightly. Right. Um, so, I could get enough clearance. Uh, I have more than enough actually. Right, that's a lot for there right now. Here. And I will obviously put it on the ground as well because when the suspension compresses, it might change, um, change. the position of the tire. Right. So, pretty much it will be similar to this. And then I will decide where I will route the fill neck for um, the control hole. And you'll be able to fill from there. Okay. Um, your fuel pump and everything would be able to fix the, the weight plate the weight or plate. this um this front right um nose, nose correct right. so other than that as i said just the it took the up pipe the waste gate pipe and you should be good to go oh the coolant lines um the radiator um right because we can do a radiator tuck tuck it as I see underneath you. here um, right <laughs> so basically Right. right, so I'm going to tuck the radiator under here. I'll let it sit on one of those supports. Right. And I will put an AN fan on here. Changes to aluminum from a stock hosing so I can run a welded AN fan onto here as well. Correct. I run an AN hose to this line. From here now, um, the end will come from here. We have the fill port in this position right here. And then we'll come down, come down and forward and into, into here. So correct. that's pretty much so. Um, so yeah, we're getting through. Yeah, man, so I can see you really push a lot of work on it. Yeah. And she's coming, she's yeah. coming. I'm very excited to be quite honest, Robert. I, I really impressed with the work. 
I, I, I actually was trying to do this. I had it in my mind to do it myself, but <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Not only a lot of people will look at it and say at the end and result and you know think that it's easy, but really nah. It ain't as easy as it might look if you want good quality. Good quality stuff, yeah. Stuff. And I, I give it, I give it, I give it to you all guys, especially the fabrication guys here, uh, because this, this looks so, but a lot of planning, a lot of work went into this, as simple as it looked. Yeah. And I really give it to you all guys for all the fabrication guys, to be quite honest. Yeah. It's I mean, crazy. Anybody, I guess, if they, if they put in the effort and the time, I mean, you know, it ain't, it ain't about art as such, it's just having the passion and... You know, putting any time and effort if you want good stuff. If you, you don't want, want your hoses blowing off and correct you know, pipes putting on and all different kind of stuff. And, you know, correct. So you don't think it through. And once you have come up with the plan, everything will flow from you. Yeah, but as I say, it looks really good. Um, guys, I come here sometimes just to get one thing do or two things do, and I just end up <laughs> telling Robert because also what I'm going to get him to do for me. Maybe put back on the bonnet. Remember we had a discussion. Oh yes, yeah. We're gonna wanna... have a, a, a bonnet scoop coming from the turbo. Right. So the air would be channeled from the um, the bonnet and drafted straight into the inlet of the turbo. Correct. So it will have full access to fresh air. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because I don't want to be breathing in that hot air. Oh. Yeah. So that's another plus that we are going to be doing. So yes, guys. As I said, you heard it from you heard it from Robert to be exact. Um, the plans that we are going forward with this car um, is amazing. I'm excited. I can't wait to see exactly when it's going to be finished. Um, we hopefully this this should be ready something probably, next week, right? Next week, yeah. Early yeah. next week. Once yeah. um, we get everything that we need, this is the aluminum. The only thing outstanding is the aluminum stuff here. Right. Um, and some material for the waist. And then you was you was the, the fitting that I went and, and get for you. Oh, that is that is to go here. Yeah. So if I had it straight through, it would be oh. in that way. And the okay. only other port is that direction over here. Right. So um, I just figured it would have been easier to put the boost control solenoid somewhere in this area and have the the fitting coming from the the uh, wastegate and and then the turbo one as you feed all okay. on this side as okay. opposed to putting it on that side right and so the clearance is tight guys if you see my selector cable yeah. <laughs> yeah so you could just wrap that cable with some um some the dei um heat True. yeah you should be good because that's only the edge of the wastegate so it's barely touching it should be should be fine should be fine yeah yeah man all right, guys, that was just a small update of what's going on with the Kia Swap BZ. Actually, it's the oldest one in the world right now, as far as I know. Uh, if you all know, you can walk and tell me, but that's just a slight update. We are going to interact with Robert a little more. As you all see, he has a lot more projects going on, so we're going to just start with him a little bit. He also has that car that you see right there. 1,000 horsepower front wheel drive coming to you. Now, he's going to start front wheel drive at first, but then after, he's going to go all wheel drive. But yeah, so we're gonna interact with him a lot more, but that was just a brief update of what is actually going on uh, with the Kia Swap BZ. Uh, Ryan, you got any thoughts about what Robert just mentioned um, in terms of the progress, as you now seeing it for the first time? Could you just tell me, you know, that's a little bit of what you see for yourself. I know you're a very technical man as well yourself. Um, talk to me. Right now, the man moving like God. The man <laughs> putting plans in place for the other plans with other plans. Okay. The moving, the building a strong engine. Nice. Getting this here so all put together now. I don't know. Everything working out. Everything, Everything working out, yeah. Everything working out. Yeah, as I was saying too, you know, sometimes it just takes small steps, you know. We, we don't, don't try to rush it. Just take your time. Um, put some thoughts, put some thoughts in it, you know, and just go along there by there, and it will work. Remember, guys, this is a stock motor bone stock here 24. Eventually, I'll build it, but for right now, I know these cars could take close to 600 bone stock, but currently, right now, I just want about 500, and you'll see how it goes. I actually ordered some 1600, 1600 injectors now because, as I had mentioned in the last vlog, these are thousand cc's but Robert was telling me that you know with me running straight E85 it's gonna 
pose a challenge in terms of probably achieving that. I mean, I gotta dilute it a bit, and I really don't want to do that. I'm gonna just put the car on straightly, straight 85. So I just ordered some 1600. So I'll be having some 1000 CC injectors for sale very shortly. But yeah, I'm happy overall. As you walk, you see this guy is a very busy man. Very, very, very busy man. You have another Evo. There's an Evo 9? 9, yeah. Evolution 9 in here. I think this came in for overhaul, right? A, a, new, a fresh rebuild, yeah. A fresh rebuild, right. So he's actually working on this as well. This guy is a very busy person. Roughly, what, 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 what can horsepower with this car could be rated? This made um, 500. I think it was 500 on pump. Um, the last. The last thing? Yeah. So, because someone wants to do uh, an E85 tuning this thing. Okay. Um, you got any so, goals in horsepower, boys? Well, I guess you want max up the turbo. It should be good for about 7, 750. GTW to take it is so should be able to meet that easily. Okay. Yeah, because he has all of the, the necessary um, stuff that comes in the house. Other than injectors, because I hear you mention injectors and stuff, easy stuff, Yeah, I just I just ordered some because as what you had told me that those those thousands would probably be good for around four something. Yeah. Yeah, I actually went and did some checks and I realized so I just ordered some 1600s. Okay. Actually, more than enough in case you get three. <laughs> 1600s should take, take you at least, if you got a good fuel pump, should um, get you in 600s. 600s. But my fear, honestly, Robert, my fear is bones. The engine. Yeah, the engine right now. It won't start. I don't really want to push it. I still want it to survive a little bit before I yeah, ease it there. You got to get tuned on, so you'll be hurt. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Be it's true. And you did the oil pump upgrade, right? Yes, oil pump upgrade for sure. K20 oil pump is in there and it's also a poor head. Okay. Well, hopefully, I should be able to join you soon in the front wheel drive class. Yes. Take some time to work on my car for over the how it is. Nice. Um, the engine is just a little bit. I'm gonna send it to get painted and finish well in the roll cage. Once the once the car is painted though, everything, most of the parts I just have sitting, will be able to bolt on permanently and it will start looking like a like a car. But right now I know it just looks like a shell, but a shell, yeah. Everything is there, trust me. <laughs> yeah, I know how you works, man. I know how you works. I know you. Okay. So, um, the, as you was as you was mentioning to me before, the plan right now with this car is front wheel drive. But starting you, drive, but you yeah. starting front wheel drive. But you setting up everything for yes. all wheel drive as well. So yes. all the fab work would have been carried out already. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I had the four wheel drive, the wagon part for a while now. Right. Um, I always wanted to, to to try the four wheel drive project. So. Um, what I plan to do is to implement that so that I won't have to be um, damaging the paint work because I would like to have it done, you know, painted pretty clean and underneath the car and all of that. Yes. Uh, to have it, you know, in a tidy, this is my first car building from bottom up. Okay. So, so I want to take, take my time up and put it together properly. So the four wheel drive is kind of proven. You know, kind of cookie cutter for most, I would say, in the evolution. There has not been any, I guess, Hondas for wheel drive other than Bali's car as yet, but right. I don't think it should be too challenging for wheel drive. Um, but the real challenge on our surface will be, is going to be um, front wheel drive, so that's why I wanted to start um, as a front wheel drive car. And then if anything, um, I might never move from front wheel drive to be honest. <laughs> I can't like it. Okay, you like yeah. it. Yeah, so because. I was like challenging myself. So. And your goals, your goals with this car front wheel drive right now, 
Um, mid sevens to low sevens. Mid sevens to low sevens. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Nice. So, um, that's, yeah, that's so guys, um, you all would have seen. Uh, he actually has it prepped and ready for front wheel drive. I think you could correct me if I'm wrong, Robert. Um, most of the time when you're going front wheel drive, it's better to have the engine mounts or the engine kind of leaning to the forward to help keep that way up to the front. Yeah, um, the way that I did it, um, I have it that I can actually swap my mount brackets front wheel drive. Right. This is the mount brackets I made, but I have the, oh, so this the was other ones, this custom. These ones I made, yeah. To okay. lean the engine forward. Lean the engine forward. Front wheel drive. I mean front wheel front drive. Front wheel drive, right. So when I decided to go forward wheel drive, I had the original high sport brackets that will tilt the engine back that the um, transfer case will be able to pass right under. Right. Nice. So So you yeah. got this fully planned out, Robert? Correct. Right. Yeah, it's pretty much once all of the planning is done, once I actually get the car painted and the cage finished well with Everything should run pretty smoothly. And um, I see you. I see you have some. You could just. This is the butt haze for the harness, ain't it? Correct. Okay. Um, kind of made it in a way that I could disconnect the harness from the car. Right. Neat. Um, nice stuff. From a quick disconnect. Yeah. So a lot of planning and yeah, a lot of thought has gone into I see that. the electricals as well. As simple as this may look, Robert. To be quite honest, uh, because. People that know about cars can look at this and see that a lot of planning went into this car already. Yeah. So we can see the funny thing. You actually get this car painted. It's just a matter. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, just, just, just installing stuff. Just installing stuff, yep. Yeah. And what, what, what you see you you working on this with? Um, Mtron. Say that again. Mtron. 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 Yeah. Wow. All right, guys. As you all see here, this guy is a master at what he does and uh, the raw cage is installed um, very 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 well put together um, he's actually preparing it now to go to the paint a man to get paint but crazy stuff guys crazy stuff uh, so it goes to show you that you know we have so much talent and so much um, stuff going on behind the scene so Next year promised to be a very good year. We all know with the whole COVID how things work out. But this car is one car to really, really, really look forward to see. I'm very excited to see it. I'm also a front wheel drive guy, so he will be joining me very soon in the front wheel drive category. Um, his plans, as I said, is mid eights to low eight, sorry, mid sevens to low sevens. Um, up at Bushy Park, the, 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 the track is not, the track don't always work for us, but I know this guy is a master behind the scene, so I know he's going to have some tricks and trays, traction control and stuff like that going on, so this one, I'm going to be having this on the channel as well, so you all can stay abreast of this car, this car is the car to watch out for, K24, right? K20, K20. whoa, whoa, K20, so he has it, why not 24? But we don't really need all the unnecessary torque, so that's the reason for going. Going here, ready? Yeah. Okay. Especially with the tarmac that we have too. Yeah, we don't have any prep track, so but starting at a disadvantage. So yeah. We don't want to get a massive amount of torque, and then I can't get no traction. So right. You heard that, guys. The reason for him going here, twenty. You know, we already start with a, a, a disadvantage at the track. So, uh, K20 it is, guys. K20. Hi, Robert. I, I can't come to speed shop and I ask about this car because, to be quite honest, this is one of my favorite cars in Barbados. I know I've been following this car for a while. Uh, I know it car went through a lot of development. So, I, you know, for my, for my subscribers, my viewers, I got to ask you, tell me what you're looking at. This is the, one of the shop cars. It has an Evo 8 with um, a built 2 litre. Built by Speed Shop, as you know. Oh, it's a 2 litre? Yes, yeah, a 2 litre. Okay. Um, aluminum rod motor. Um, made 1060, 50 PSI. 1060, wow. Um,
time so far was an ending with some problems. So hopefully we can do some low nine second passes if we do get some a quarter mile again or some fives in the in the in the if. Yeah. More than capable of just to get everything. Yeah, um, because I remember at the last test on tune, um, when you came out to it, it had some issues with the car at the time. Uh, what exactly you um, was experiencing? What happened is the car has um, it had tuned the issue to have a fuel protection so that it could protect the engine. Right. If anything was to go bad, it start to lean out and inject the fuel or pump or whatever. Right. It would kind of shut down the car. So the O2 sensor had gone bad. I actually still have to replace it. So okay. I have to turn off the um, protection for now. Um, so that was limiting the car. Limiting the car. 3,000 RPM. 3, RPM. Oh. And that was the problem. Um, okay. Obviously, if I was kind of dealing with two cars, so I didn't have enough time to really sit down and um, assess the problem. But yeah, I found it just as soon as I get it back to the shop. Okay, nice. So the future plans for this car basically, as you say, is to run, try to get deep down into, into the nines. If you go back to, or maybe do go back to Bushy Park, which is the EFML, to probably run some five second passes. Yeah, that would be the, the, the plan for the car to do some five second passes. I think uh. the best time we've done so far was six, one, or two. Oh, what problems? Yeah, trying to dial in the, um, the flat shift. Um, it has some issues with breaking the gear, the, the gear box at some point in time. Right. In case. But you know how it goes with these, these type of cars. Always something. Always something, yeah. Um, just when it, when everything comes together, you can do it. Uh, yeah, because to do like a 6 1, as you say, with problems, you can only imagine. Um, what it could do when everything is working. You all got any plans too because about thinking about going outside of Barbados? Yeah. Next year if you know if this COVID thing eases up uh, we are able to, to travel. We would like to take care of some of the islands. Uh, hopefully St. Vincent or, or you know, some, uh, Antigua. Whichever Whichever. We are we are invited to uh, if you got any funds to do it and the support we will take the car down and actually be able to represent Got a lot of cars go through that. Yes. Step it up and look to represent too. Exactly. Me, me, myself as well. I would like to leave the island and go out there and experience um, what the world got to offer for us. Um, a prep trap. A prep trap. Yes, cause here we, we don't know what's going on. We don't have a prep trap as yet. But yes, guys, this car, as he just mentioned, thousand real horsepower. Um, so got some issues going on with it, so got some more delineating to do. But I can leave the speed shop without asking him about this car. Um, cause as I said, this car is really fast. <laughs> very fast, man, very fast. But is it come a long way, ain't it, Robert? Yeah, um, we still got some plans. I would like to chew print the car. Come out the print and put a... Chew print? Yeah. But, you know, I'll do that after. It really would take a paint job as well. Right. Um, but after we get things that are in a certain way, then we'll put it down and don't break it. Um, it drew for some suspension work, some machines that just brought me in actually. So that would be the plan ahead. You could the tell me. The engine is still, uh -huh. this is now two years it was running. Um, no issues so far. I might put it down next year and refresh it. It doesn't show any signs. I guess I would go down tense and see. Okay. If, as you would know, the aluminum rods, rods have a shelf break. Correct. Um, but we'll see how far it goes. Um, if I decide to put it down, I'll just run it next season because it has not done much this year. Yeah, due to the COVID. Correct. Due to the COVID. So, yeah. I see when I got the near sniper, they could tell me what this near come from. Actually, the owner of the car decided on, <laughs> on, on the game for it, so yeah, I, I didn't have anything to do Okay, with okay. It. I understand. So there's a sponsored car by the speed shop? Correct. Correct. Sponsored by the speed shop. Okay, nice.
All right, guys. Well, you just heard Robert. Just give us a. Uh, a what? You see who this car is on? This is on a AM Infinity. AM Infinity, yeah. Well, you all just heard it from Robert. That was a wrap for the speed shop. Um, I hope you all guys had an excited um, vlog because it was excited for me to visit the speed shop to see the progress that is going on with the Kia Swap BZ and all the projects that he has here at the shop. So, with no further ado, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next one.